I get asked many times now, When Blatorva? At least whenever I stream on Twitch. In case you didn't know, it's a cosmetic reward from the latest PVM challenge meant to make you sweat and cower in fear. Testing all four of the awakened versions of the Desert Treasure 2 bosses would grant you the Ancient Blood Ornament Kit, which allows you to change the look of Torva to the Blood version. Finally, I can take on the Blood Torva challenge. The only catch is, I don't have infinite tries. Since I'm Iron Man by the way, I cannot buy orbs in the GE to keep trying and each attempt is minus one orb. Thanks to the Soul Reaper Axe grind though where we killed thousands of Desert Treasure bosses, I managed to get 75 orbs meaning 75 tries. There is of course the cheeky option to do the quest, buy the gear and the orbs to practice infinitely on my normal account but I reckon that would water down the challenge and it does sound like a chore so we will see if we can do this challenge without having to use this ultimate trump card. So what's my strategy to pull this off? Well, the first part of the preparations is to practice the regular versions until I feel like I've mastered them. I want the drops from these bosses anyway so I can kill two birds with one stone. By this point in the video, I already feel pretty comfy with normal Leviathan, the Whisper, and Vardovis. I just need to kill regular Duke enough times to feel comfy to send the awakened versions. The second part of the prep is to do a bit of research on the fights to get an idea of what I'm up against. Before we begin, I'm going to go AFK some anglers and play one of my favorite mobile games. Let's talk about it. Are you looking for a game to play on the side that is convenient to play and fun? Look no further because our sponsor Raid Shadow Legends is definitely the game for you. Playable on both PC and mobile, you can collect over 700 champions and commend them through various PVM and PvP content. I definitely appreciate the auto battle features as it allows me to make some good progress with loving my champions and getting resources. There's so many ways to improve your champions from different types of gear to different skill upgrades and blessings. Ray now has a new strongest tier of champions with a new mechanic. Just like how I can go from my analytical nerdy self to my more active and speedy self, the new mythical champions can metamorph into a different form possessing new powers, essentially making it two champions in one. You can unlock them using primal shards in the portal. They also will share the same gear and boost, so make sure you upgrade these champions wisely. These champions have the highest versatility of all champions, meaning that you can create synergies between the two forms and also synergy with your other champions in the team. There is a free legendary champion, Sung Wukong. All you've got to do is log in to raid on 7 different days between August 22nd and October 23rd. New players. Only now you have the chance to get one of the best epic champions, Stag Knight, as well as the skin for him designed by John Tron himself. Use the promo code JTSKIN. Also, if you click my link or scan the QR code right here, you'll get a free star pack with this cool in-game loot. Set out on your new epic fantasy adventure and become the best warrior in raid. Click on that link in the description to get started and I will see you in the dungeons. Torva. So yeah, I haven't been to Duke since day one, so it's been like many, many weeks now. So we're gonna get good at this. My main DPS weapon is gonna be Scythe. Assuming I land a good BGS, because the BGS lowers defense and the Scythe only goes crazy if I can lower its defense. 60,000 blood runes onto the Scythe. So that way we can use it at the Duke. Uh, there we go. All right, let's see how many blood runes we got left. 60K, we should be all right. Oh my God, it still hits me. Oh, I did a perfect kill and I got a thousand soul runes. Okay, at least this boss drops a thousand soul runes. Goddamn. Yes. Oh, that was a fast kill. Could be a PB. Oh, 131 PB. Let's go. We take those. We take those. Oh, nice. Chromium ingot. Hell yeah. 11 out of 12. Let's go. I need one more. All right. Do I bank? Nice, dude. I'm getting uh, lucky with the orbs, though. That was my uh, fourth orb today. Oh, no, my second orb today. But I did get two yesterday, though, too. So, now I think we're at 75 orbs while preparing our way to the to the art mode. We've done this boss adequately enough. Honestly, there's not much to learn. 
So, 75 warps. Hopefully we can get it done within that. Big goal ahead of us starting tomorrow. And I'm going to die a lot. Try and complete this goal, which is the Blood Torva challenge. So, uh, we are going to have to sacrifice a Fernic Defender help. It's worth it. I have a lot of these uh, extras. And it's 88 mil. So, it's going to last me a long time. Oh, actually, uh, if you confirm it, it goes for 94 mil. That's really good because, look, I, I don't have much money left. I only have 260k left in my coffer. I've used a lot of money just practicing the regular versions. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do this. And we will have 94 mil now in the desk coffer. Hopefully, that's plenty to actually complete the Blood Torva challenge on here. Uh, we'll see, you know, we'll see. All right, I think I've adequately prepared myself for the Blood Torva challenge. I decided I want to do what players typically consider were the hardest awakened bosses first. So I decided I would do Vardovis, Leviathan, Duke, and finally Whisper in that order. Most people would say Leviathan is the hardest and in initial glance, I think so too. But Vardo is my favorite fight of the four. So I decided I would do the hard Vardo first. I will talk about the thought process and overall strategy for these bosses. Before I go into each of the challenges though, it is important to know that all of the awakened bosses have much higher HP, higher defense, and higher KO potential for all their mechanics. I'm just going to assume you guys know at least the basic version mechanics, so I'm not going to go over that. The setup is going to be just the thing, because the boss defense is higher than the regular, and also I'm going to focus more on dodging and surviving so i can't upkeep the charges on the axe too much but the idea is pretty simple i actually brought dragon claws instead later on just because i feel like just killing it faster at the end is going to be more important and zara's cross is more useful if i'm doing like multiple kills but we're only killing it once so it is time to tackle awaken fardovis fardovis in both versions are mostly the same mechanics so practicing the regular vardo helps massively if you can do the regular vardo perfectly often it will save you a ton of time having to practice the hard version and money if you are buying the orbs. The biggest mechanical difference in Harmo Vardo is that the axes do immediate damage to you if they spawn on top of you. This means that you cannot hug the wall for long periods of time, so that method where you hug the wall for regular Vardo doesn't work. So I have to stand just above one pillar for most of the fight and just move into the wall to dodge axes and go back to the original spawn. Another major difference is that his head that spawns will come in twos as the fight progresses. One will shoot a magic prayer disable attack and the other one will shoot a range disable attack. This means that there is more prayer switching this time around. The thing that will most certainly end your attempts is failing to dodge the flying axe with being off prayer because you try to time flicking the heads the same prayer and you mess up. One of those axes can easily hit a 70 to 90 off prayer and that's not even counting the bleed damage. Trying to time axe dodging and the two heads per disabling attacks is definitely no easy feat. Ah, uh, man. God damn it, just too many. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, but... Oof, fucking hell, I survived that. But I'm not going to make this one, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, I started shaking towards the end. My initial strategy was trying my best to perfect the heads no matter what, on top of dodging the axes. But I quickly realized that sometimes, it's just not possible to do all that at once. Especially because these mechanics happen together way more often. So I need to simplify my strategy a bit. Instead, I decided I would make sure to dodge the flying axes at all costs and accept that sometimes my prayer will be disabled by the heads. Having my prayer disabled means that the boss will probably smack me for a 50 or 60, but it is much better than taking a 90 from an axe, which is basically instant death. Also, the boss attacks super slowly, so I can easily just eat up and survive the boss's first regular attack and put my prayer back on before his next auto attack. Need to make sure I don't spawn on the on the wall. Oh, that that hurts. I need to make sure I just go back instantly. 
We need to make sure we go back instantly. Yeah, towards the end, I need to not. I'd rather take that hit. I'd rather take that hit. <laughs> I'd rather take that. Nope. Ouch. I'd rather take that hit. There we go. Much better. Oh, that was bad. That was bad. Alright, I'm shaking less, so that helps a lot. Really good. I needed that. I'm gonna take that hit. Or not. Okay. Ouch. Oh, nice. That was that was pretty good. Woo! That was fun. That was fun. Oh, goddamn. Not bad. We actually got it. That only took a few orbs, but good thing I did a thousand kills of regular and I did some research, you know? Holy. That was nice. We we focused on the axe, and that was it, dude. We just focused on the axe. That's all we needed to do. Oh, right. Yeah, now, once I got the shaking under control, oh, much better, much better. And also the tip where at the enrage to just focus on clicking captures and not right-click the hit. You might say the boss decided to go easy on me. But I felt pretty comfy most of the time, so his defeat by my hands is inevitable. It is time for the next challenge, which is Awaken Leviathan. We warmed up a bit with regular Levi, but I already killed this guy 2,300 times thanks to the Soul Brax grind, so it still feels like I'm just breathing air. Maybe some combo eats, yeah. Alright, we're gonna try uh, this setup here. Mainly because I'm worried about the 20% and Void is the best at the last Enrage phase, so... I just want to get that phase done as fast as possible, so... I decided to ditch the Zarya Crossbow though and just keep T-Bowing just to keep the fight simple because I'm going for 1kc, not going for a speedrun. Unlike Vardo regular though, the Awakened version has an additional mechanic on top of all of his old mechanics becoming a lot harder. This means that practicing the regular version is not as impactful as it was for like Vardo. Luckily, I watched my friend try the Awakened version and I helped their craft his way to a completion. Also, the hard Vardo completion is making me feel hopeful. The first 50% of the fight is somewhat similar to the regular levy, but you want to prevent the boss from dropping rocks until the enrage phase. Random rocks will drastically lower your chance of completing this challenge as you want as much room as possible 
to comfortably avoid the seeking tornado mechanic at 50% HP and for the enrage phase. This means you have to deal with the lightning mechanic and the rock missile mechanic a lot more often as the boss will use one of those specials every time you stun it and then you hit it from the back. Baiting the rocks on the back of the arena during the rock missile attack is omega important. The Seeking Tornado is similar to the first Ignato from TLB. If this Nato touches you though, you will lose like 50 HP and it will respawn in a few seconds to try to damage you again. The Nato makes the rest of the fight way more challenging because now you have to stun the boss, dodge lightning, and bait the rock missiles while trying to run away from the tornado. After multiple attempts past 50% HP, I got better with dealing with the natos. Sometimes I do take nato damage on purpose so I can be sure I deal with the rock mechanic properly because his blast attack hits the 70s if I don't hide behind the rocks on time. And placing the rocks properly is super critical to make my pathing nice. The last 20% is the true challenge though because his enrage phase attacks are so fast like blowpipe speed. You must follow the white orb while running away from the nato, prayer flicking his attacks, and trying to kill the boss in the process and not being in melee range. However, moving from one side to the other through the enrage phase took some practice. I would accidentally go into melee distance when going around the corner and he would bite me for a massive damage, usually causing instant death. No! <laughs> 7.4%, okay, okay. All right, I'm good with the flicking, but I, I'm bad with the pathing. God damn it. I would say for first KC attempts, the enrage phase is essentially a DPS check because if you take a third tornado, you're pretty much dead. Also, trying to eat food mid enrage is probably not a good idea for your first KC runs. So try your best to just flake well, move well, prep your enrage start well so you can web weaver and Tebow DPS. Highly recommend Void for the Enrage phase though so you can maximize your DPS since White Ball gives you 100% accuracy so Void's terribly low accuracy is not a problem. Starting the Enrage phase properly is so important because you want to make sure you land two Web Weaver specs as soon as the White Orb spawns so you have just enough time to switch to your T-Bow or whatever range weapon you have before the ball starts attacking. Oh, what? what, what, what? <laughs> no! 1% because I got bit. No, you piece of dookie. Oh my god. He bit me. That's so unlucky. Uh, this is going to be a bit rough. Alright, I should be okay. All right, let's do this. Let's go, boys. That was a uh, very close call. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, Void is definitely nice, bro. Oh, HP though. God damn. This is definitely the hardest one, man. Holy shit. That was definitely the hardest one. Wait, I get rune arrows? Oh my god. Let's go. 54. Not even a perfect kill. Suck at the game. Oh. Holy shit, dude! That was a uh, that was definitely one hard ass boss. I I don't want to even go back. I don't even want to go back to this place, bro. Oh, get me out of here! Definitely the hardest challenge so far at 19 attempts. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time to try the other two today, but it's okay because I have 53 awakened orb left for the last two. All right, we slightly modified the setup. I'm bringing the Slayer Helm because it reduces the damage from the vents. Totally forgot about them. So yeah, we're gonna play defensive. Also, I forgot about Blood Fury, so I, I uh, ended up swapping a Blood Fury just because it lets me keep calm and not have to brew as much. Next is Awakened Duke Succulus. Harmo Duke is drastically different from regular Duke. This version of Duke has two new mechanics. A Poison Trail at 75% HP that deals constant tens if you step on them. 
and roaming black orbs at around 33% HP that deals 25 damage if it touches you. Also, when Duke does his gas vent attack, he will target four of the closest vents you are on after 85% HP. You ideally want to run around the second row of vents before making it to the other side of the pillar so that the front vents are safe. If you do not, the front vents will have a gas and you will most likely take extra damage running through them when you are forced to move due to a different mechanic like Poison Trail. Luckily, Duke is pretty chill until Poison Trail shows up. I've done so much Poison Trail running at Ohm Chambers thousands of times, so I am pretty comfortable moving around with the Poison Trail. The idea is to move in a zigzag when Poison Trail, so you don't take the poison damage. While zigzagging Poison Trail, you hit the boss on the same tick that it attacks, so that you trigger his melee attack, but dodge it by stepping back out and continue to zigzag move into the other side of the pillar. Doing the acid walk wrong will make the boss use the magic attack, which will hit pretty hard even with protection from magic. Managing the acid walk at Duke will definitely be the overall hardest part about this challenge, especially if you're not good at tick walking or if you're not used to acid trail mechanic. For me, learning to multitask the poison walk while kiting the boss definitely took some attempts to get comfortable. This becomes even harder when the black ball shows up and you have to acid walk, kite the boss, and try to dodge the black ball all at the same time. I found that sometimes just ignoring the black ball can be more beneficial when you are dealing with the acid trail because the black ball only hits a 25. So you can recover from that pretty easily with combo food. The black orb is definitely more of a distraction and the other mechanics are more dangerous and a bigger priority. Oh, no way. Ah, oh, so close, man. My fucking hits, dude. All right, we're going to make some mana fight remedies because they are basically a restore over time. And I was brewing a lot at the end, so I was missing a lot because of that. So we're bringing that. All right, we're just going to drink this now. Because it lasts five minutes. What? Oh, 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 what? How my character do that? God, boys, that was a tough one. That was a tough one. Ooh, how many try? How many kills did we? I mean, how many times did he kick my ass? Sixteen times. Okay, honestly, okay, Leviathan was, was still harder. Okay, I honestly thought this guy was gonna be harder than Leviathan in terms of if we're just gonna base it off of how many times I died, you know? But um, yeah, no, Leviathan is still the most hard, and I'm I'm glad that it is. It'd be awkward to tell people, like, I struggled most with this boss than uh, the Leviathan, but yeah. Last but not least is the Awakened Whisper. I got baited because many people told me this one was super free, so I didn't bother to research the harbor at all. That was a terrible idea. Alright, I got it, I got it. What? Oh! No! Uh, yeah, I fucked it up. Okay, what, what? there's five? Oh my god, dude, I thought there was four. The biggest challenge of Harmo Whisper was definitely maintaining your sanity bar. It was so easy to lose sanity and just die to that mechanic due to some of the mechanics severely reducing sanity if you do it wrong in the hard version. Once you reach zero sanity, you basically lose the fight because it is impossible to out eat that damage from it. In particular, the pillar mechanic is way more punishing this time. You have to properly hide behind five pillars this time to block her five wave attacks instead of the regular three. You cannot just use any five pillars. You have to make sure you hide on the weakest pillar first, and the final pillar will be the pillar with maxed health. 
normally this wouldn't be too hard because you could just stay inside the shower room and spend a lot of time looking at the hp but you can't really do that in the hard mode because if you're in the shadow realm for too long in the hard mode you will lose so much sanity and you will basically fail to kill if you stay too long so you have to quickly figure out which pillars you will use and quickly leave the shadow realm some people like to just print the screen and paste the screenshot of the pillars hp to solve this i did not do that i found a pretty decent way to deal with the pillar phase after a few tries once the pillar phase starts i go into the shower room as usual i quickly look at the pillar with the highest hp and then i look on the opposite side of the pillars and find the weakest pillar and see which pillars around it are the second and third weakest this way i can leave quickly do the first three pillars and run in the direction to the full hp pill on the fifth wave attack this will naturally lead me to the fourth pillar without having to memorize that and the worst part is you have to deal with the pillar phase mechanic at least two to three times and you basically cannot mess up a single one the other mechanics aren't too hard to deal with fortunately there are more ghosts during the ghost special which can be perfectly tagged with the blowpipe inventor but you can also just tag the insanity ghost and you will only take damage which is easy to eat up after I decided to just tag the sanity ghost because I tried to use Venator and Blowpipe. It was a little bit too difficult and would take a lot of practice, so I didn't bother. Once I figured out how to deal with the pillars consistently though, the rest was history. Towards the end now. No way, I died to insanity. Ah! Alright, now our insanity is very high and it's almost at the end, so. Oh, we got it anyways. Nice. Oh, that took a lot longer than uh, than uh, we we needed to. I'm not gonna lie. Holy shit! Ten minutes. Oh my god, that was such a long fight. I'm hungry. I need to eat some food. This boss did take me 16 tries, but unlike the other three bosses, I did not do any research, so it definitely could have been a lot less attempts. I would say this is definitely the easiest of the four to beat. Overall, it took. 56 attempts to beat the challenge and i have quite a good amount left over i will definitely hold on to them in case the desert treasure 2 boss common achievements might require more awakened boss skills they typically do have tasks for hard versions of every content all right so uh let's do this how we do this we just use it on thing yeah we just use it on on the torrid pieces all right ornament kit 20,000 blood runes i am going to rune crafting after this all right, so we're gonna make these legs. Rest in peace, my blood runes. All right, nice. We got the legs. It looks great. I'm not gonna lie. I do like the the darker colors here. And now we're gonna make the body. And I think we're gonna stop right here because, dude, I just like this regular helmet so much more, man. No, no, I will. I will. Don't worry. I have to. So we can we can mix and match. We can mix and match. I don't think it looks bad. I just think this looks better. I just think this looks nicer, though. I don't know, man. I do like this more. Now it is time to grab the rest of the Desert Treasure 2 drops. We still need the BIS Slash Ring, the Belter, and the BIS Magic Ring, the Magus. So it is time to grind more Whisper and Duke to close the Desert Treasure 2 chapter, Mr. Iron Bar. Oh shit, when do I get 40 million Mooncrafting? Oh hell yeah, nice. I've been AFK runecrafting like crazy. I'm back up to 100k, let's go. Quite a while ago, I did drop some stuff over from my Iron Man to my main. I do it from time to time. This time around, it was mainly just Nightmare Drop dupes and the Raise 3 dupes because a lot of those items are just definitely going to keep going down in price due to constant supply or limited demand. 
but yeah i got about 1.4 bill extra on my normal account and this definitely would have been helpful for practicing on the hard mode i was definitely ready to use the account if the initial plan of doing it on the iron man failed utterly we didn't have to use the account for practice but maybe in the future we might have to you never know